This video is brought to you by Henson Shaving. Today, Spain is set to become the world's fastest growing major economy. Washington Post owner Jeff Bezos defends his decision to pull an endorsement of Kamala Harris, and the Taliban introduced yet another ban on women's rights. From TLDR News, this is your daily briefing for Tuesday, the 29th of October, 2024. Our main story today is that Spain, the Eurozone's fourth largest economy, is set to outpace the Eurozone and the US to become the world's fastest growing major advanced economy this year. According to the Financial Times, economists polled by Consensus Economics expect GDP data this week to show Spain is on course to grow 2.7% this year, while the IMF's predictions are even more bullish. It expects Spain's economy to grow by 2.9%, slightly higher than the 2.8% it predicts for the US. This data illustrates a trend we've covered before in our videos over on the TLDR EU channel, which is that several southern European states are outperforming northern Europe economically. Germany and the Netherlands, for example, have struggled to grow this year, while Spain and Greece have performed well. So what's driving this soaring growth? Well, in Spain's case, it's a mixture of factors, including immigration, tourism, foreign investment, and public spending. According to the Madrid-based think tank Funcas, 700,000 working-age immigrants have entered the workforce over the past three years, filling 40% of all new jobs created. Helping Spain hit a record high of 21.8 million people in employment in the third quarter of 2024. However, some opposition politicians have noted that GDP per capita is rising more slowly than GDP in real terms, partly because many immigrants are employed in low-skilled, low-paid jobs, while other Spanish workers are still struggling with the high cost of living. Regardless, the forecast will be another boost for Spanish Prime Minister Pedro Sánchez, who's eager to claim credit and bolster the country's international standing. Sanchez said last week that Spain was living in an extraordinary moment and experiencing great success. The IMF also predicts a good year for Spain in 2025, with Spain forecast to be the third fastest growing major economy after Canada and the US. There's more on the way, but remember to subscribe and ring the bell for more daily briefing tomorrow. Plus, if you want to support the channel like Till, then consider joining the TLDR Daily Membership Program for just $1.99. US billionaire and owner of the Washington Post, Jeff Bezos, has doubled down on his decision to pull an endorsement of US Democratic presidential candidate Kamala Harris from the newspaper. In a column published on Monday, Bezos said he had made a principled decision not to endorse either candidate, saying that political endorsements create a perception of bias. He also denied that his decision was part of a quid pro quo arrangement between his rocket company, Blue Origin, and US Republican candidate Donald Trump. For context, over the past few days, it's transpired that the Washington Post's editorial board had written an endorsement of Kamala Harris last week that was not published on Bezos' orders. It's the first time since 1988 that the paper hasn't made a presidential endorsement, which has sparked furious discussion and even several senior editorial resignations. On top of that, an enormous 200,000 Washington Post subscribers have reportedly cancelled their subscriptions, concerned about the impact of a lack of Harris endorsement on democracy and press freedom. Trump has a difficult relationship with the media, which he claims lies, whilst peddling conspiracy theories via his own social media accounts. Staying in the US now, where ballot boxes in Washington and Oregon were set alight. It's currently believed that this has affected hundreds of ballots, although the exact number is not known. The current theory is that the same culprit set both boxes alight. Police say that they've now identified a vehicle that they think is connected to both fires. The boxes were set alight at around 4am on Monday morning, according to reports. Clark County's auditor Greg Kimsey has explained that this is a direct attack on democracy and urged anyone who placed their ballot in the box after 11am on Saturday to check the status of the ballot and contact the election auditor's office. Moving to Afghanistan now, where the Taliban have introduced yet another hardline law aimed at suppressing women. Yesterday, the country's Minister for the Promotion of Virtue and Prevention of Vice, Khalid Hanafi, stated that women should no longer be allowed to hear other women's voices. He went on to say that even when an adult female prays and another female passes by, she must not pray loudly enough for them to hear. Hanafi explained that the rule wouldn't be implemented immediately, 
instead saying that they will be gradually implemented and God will be helping us in each step we take. The new rule was announced via a voice recording, as the Taliban recently banned living beings from being shown on TV. A woman living in Kabul spoke to the Telegraph and explained, whatever he, or Hanafi, says is a form of mental torture for us. Living in Afghanistan is incredibly painful for us as women. Afghanistan is forgotten, and that's why they are suppressing us. They're torturing us on a daily basis. This is simply the latest in the Taliban's crackdown on women. Previously, the Taliban ordered women to cover their faces to avoid temptation and tempting others, told women to try not to speak in the presence of unfamiliar men, must be accompanied by a male guardian when they leave their homes, have been ordered not to speak loudly inside their homes, and must ensure that their voices are not heard from outside their homes. Over in the Philippines, former President Rodrigo Duterte has, this week, admitted that he maintained a death squad of seven gangsters as mayor in order to crack down on crime. He made the admission in his first testimony in an official investigation on his war on drugs. The Philippine government estimated that more than 6,000 people have been killed by police in Duterte's war. He explained that he told the squad to kill this person, because if you do not, I will kill you. He also admitted that he told police officers to encourage suspects to fight back so that the police could justify the killings. In his testimony, he added, Do not question my policies, because I offer no apologies, no excuses. I did what I had to do, and whether or not you believe it, I did it for my country. I hate drugs, and I make no mistake about it. Duterte won the presidency in a landslide in 2016, and served until 2022. In our final uplifting story today, we discuss the discovery of an ancient Mayan city in Mexico by a team of PhD researchers. Luke Old Thomas, a PhD student at Tulane University in the US, said, I was on something like page 16 of Google search and found a laser survey done by a Mexican organization for environmental monitoring. He then processed the survey's data with methods used by archaeologists to find a huge ancient city the size of Edinburgh in the southeastern state of Campeche. The team of archaeologists found that the hidden complex, which they've called Valeriana, contained two plazas with temple pyramids, sports field, causeways connecting districts, amphitheatres, and even a reservoir. It has the hallmarks of a capital city and is thought to have been home to 30,000 to 50,000 people, more than the population of the region today at its peak from 750 to 850 AD. They also believe it's the second most dense site after Calakmul, thought to be the largest Mayan site in ancient Latin America. If you're sick of the gimmicks other shaving brands use, the subscriptions, moisturizing strips, lasers, whatever, then you'll need to check out Henson. Because, and here's the dirty secret about the razor industry, even the cheapest dollar store disposable razors will likely give you a reasonably smooth shave. The challenge is the impact they'll have on your skin. To protect your skin while shaving, you need to actually support the blade well. And Henson can provide that quality shave even with cheap blades, thanks to the Henson razor, which they produce at their aerospace machine shop, which also produces parts for the ISS and perfectly holds the blade at a 30 degree angle and extends it only 0.0013 inches, less than the width of a human hair. In classic TLDR style, that's important for three reasons. Firstly, it's way cheaper. Those fancy blade cartridges aren't necessarily designed to provide a better shaving experience. They're about jacking up prices. Instead, Henson's razor takes standard blades that cost just 10 cents each, meaning that while the initial handle might be more expensive, in the long run, you'll save a ton of cash. Secondly, it's far better for the environment to be using individual blades than joining the 2 billion razor cartridges thrown away every year in the US alone, with Henson's products containing no plastic at all, even in their packaging. Finally, this superb engineering and precise blade tech just provides an incredible shave. If you want to try it out, click the link in the description, then add a razor and 100 blades to your cart. Then once you've done that, add our discount code TLDR at checkout and you'll get all of those blades totally free.